Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 21, and I'm going to discuss product rule number 6. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. The previous video to this is number 20, where I got the curl of a vector field, uh, and the vector field was the, product, or the result of the cross product between vectors A and B. Now, when I initially tried to do the current video, which is the, uh, the gradient of the scalar field when you take the dot product of A and B, I couldn't do it. In actual fact, I tried many different uh, times to try and uh, simplify this expression into, into the one that I know what the answer is. Couldn't do it. So it frustrated me a lot. And then eventually I started doing the other product rules in the manner that I have presented in my current videos. And once I did that, everything seemed to fall into place and when I finally came to this particular product rule it seemed to be very straightforward because it already built up the kind of um, the techniques for simplifying the expressions so for that reason if you don't understand what's happening in this video look at videos 1 to 6 in, in the, for the product rule because that is where I've sequentially built upon the, uh, the techniques so to move on I'm trying to take the gradient which will give me a vector of a scalar field uh, which is the result of vectors a dot b. So a dot b simply is a sub x, b sub x, plus a sub y, b sub y, plus a sub z, b sub z, a scalar. Now if I take the, gra the gradient of that, of course, I'm going to get a vector field. So I take, say, delta del x, and I, I operate on each of these three terms, that gives me my i hat direction. I take delta del y, and I operate on each of these three terms, and it gives me my j hat direction. Then I operate delta del z on each of these three terms, and it gives me my k hat direction. So now I have 1, 2, 3, uh, 6, I have 9 terms. But note that we actually f actually have products. For example, del del x of a, a sub x times b sub x is a product. So instead of having 3, 6, 9 terms, it will turn out that I will have 18 terms. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, the next thing we need to do is do the products. Now, it's very straightforward to do them, but I'm not going to. I'm, I could easily have written them all down, but I'm not going to. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So let's say I do the product rules for each of the terms in the i hat direction. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms, as I'm supposed to. Plus, of course, j hat terms and k hat terms, which I'm not writing. Now, the point is, is here is, uh, is that we are dealing with a vector field. And the usual trick here is to isolate and simply uh, and simplify a single dimension at a time, because then if you add the k hat and j hat dimensions, you just go from one dimension to three, and they will give you the same answers. So what we've written here so far seems seems pointless. It seems hopeless. Like how are we going to progress from here? But the point, like I said, is you just you you look at your single dimension, and you 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 are guaranteed. I'm telling you, you are guaranteed to find something uh, which will help you. So let's look at our i hat dimension again. Okay, so this is this is just the the i hat terms, and it's exactly what I've written up here. So it's go, it's just rewritten them. Now nothing nothing jumps out here. There is no immediate symmetry uh, uh, present uh, or visible because there is no immediate symmetry even visible yet or present yet. So our experience, though, from the product rules one through five, indicates we're likely to be using other products, like for example the dot product of A and the, the nabla. That, for example, is a product we have seen in the past. So, in doing this, we suggest or we should have a reasonable feeling that there, are, there is a product hidden there somewhere, we just can't see it. So, let's just pick a few of the terms. Let's say, for example, we pick the terms, the first two terms, A sub x delta del x times B sub x, and B sub x delta del x times A sub x. Now, if you look at these, and from your experience of the last five videos, it might appear to you, and hopefully at this stage it should appear to you, that in actual fact we're looking at for, for perhaps the dot product of A and the nabla multiplied by B sub x here, and B dot the nabla multiplied by A sub x here. So the question is, is that what we're looking at? So let's look at the A, A dot the, the nabla. Well, A dot the nabla has three terms here, and of course it's a scalar field. But we're looking at a vector field, so if we multiply by b sub x, we'll get, our, we'll get our vector field. But the problem here is, if in fact we are looking at, in the case of a dot the nabla, at, at times b sub x, if we're actually looking at this, we're missing two out of the three terms. We're missing a sub y del del y and a sub z del del z. 
And if you look up here, there those terms are not ex they're not present. So you might say, well, I look, there's there's no way that two two out of the three terms are are, are missing. Um, let's just give up. But strangely enough, uh, I don't know exactly why, but when I was doing this, I decided to let's 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 persist. So I suggest you to persist. So uh, if we if we are to go at this angle, we need to add and therefore subtract each of the four terms that we're missing. Two terms for uh, for we'll, we'll say for this one and two terms for this one. So I have plus or minus each of the terms. Next, where do we go from that? So we're going to get, um, I'm just going to write it down up here, once you, once you do that you'll get the following, just bear with me. So you plug in, you plug in those, those, add and subtract those terms and what you're going to get as a result is a dot with the nabla times b sub x which is a vector field plus b dotted with the nabla times a sub x which of course is also a vector field plus all the other terms uh, th that we that we subtracted we'll say that aren't used and the terms still up here which we haven't used so I'm going to put all that together now and we're going to we're going to see where it goes so just bear with me there just one moment while I put it all together so what we have at the moment is um, we have, I'm just going to write down an actual fact, the, the extra terms which, which we didn't employ so far. So the extra terms we haven't employed in the i hat direction are a sub y, del del y, b sub x, minus a sub z, del del z, b sub x, minus b sub y, del del y, a sub x, and we're going to have minus b sub z, del del z, a sub x, plus a sub y, del del x, b sub y, plus b sub y, del del x, a sub y, and finally the last two terms, plus a sub z, del del z, uh, b sub, b sub z, that's actually del del x, and we're going to have plus b sub z, del del x, and we're going to have a sub z. And you might be saying to yourself, well, ah, here, look, this is, this is going to be, this is no good to us. Okay, I think this is absolutely no good to us. They should all they should all be x's by the way, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should all be. They're all a sub y del del y, a sub z del del z. This should be del del y. Excuse me now. I've just seen some typos which I want to correct. That is in fact z. That's x. That's correct. That's x. That's correct. That's x and that's x. Okay, all good. So you might say to yourself, well, where do we go from here? Now, here is, I suppose, where your, your, your small bit of your um, experience should come into at this stage. You're probably looking at a cross product of some form here. Notice that if you're doing a cross product and involve the i-hat dimension, there are no, we'll say, a sub x components or a sub um, or b sub x components in the i-hat direction. Okay? So, what happens if we decide then to factorize, like we have a sub y here and here, and we have a sub z here and here, and we have b sub x here, and we, have another, we should have another b sub x there somewhere. Uh, a sub x, yeah, we've, we, you know, there are plenty of terms there like that. So what happens if I take, let's say, minus a sub y? We're going to have del del y b sub x. The other a, a, a sub y term is here. So this time it's going to be minus uh, del del x b sub y. Let's look at another term. Let's let's take out a sub z. Well, if we take out a sub z, we're going to have del del z b sub x. And look at where's our other a sub z term? We're going to have minus del del x b sub z. Okay. And it should be pretty clear to you already that these, in fact, here are cross product terms. So what we have is we have a multiplied by some cross product involving b. Okay. So if you look at the missing terms, okay, the, the remainder, um, the, the, as I said, they appear to be cross products. So if you actually look at the cross products, you in actual fact do have them. So the result here is that you have, uh, having put, put them all together, you're going to have the following cross products. You're going to have A cross the curl of B, and you're going to have B cross the curl of A. And if you don't believe me, you, you, just, you just need to check it yourself. 
So that means if you extend to, to your three, three dimensions, that means that a dot, or excuse me, the, uh, the divergence of a dot b, not the, it's not the divergence, it's the gradient of a dot b. I'm starting to make mistakes in my uh, or typographical mistakes, I'm sorry. So it's going to be equal to a dot the nabla times b plus b dot the nabla times a. Uh, we're going to have to add to that a cross the curl of b and we have to add to that plus b um, cross the curl of a. Alright, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel and you might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com.